Hello, hello guys and gals. Welcome to our next practice problem video. I'm going to start this video at practice problem 10 and we'll see how far we get. Okay. So in practice problem 10, each student in a class placed a two gram sample of a mixture of copper and aluminum in a beaker and placed the beaker in a fume hood. The students slowly poured 15 milliliters of 15.8 molar uh, nitric acid into their beakers. The reaction between the copper in the mixture and the nitric acid is react represented in the equation above. The students observed that a brown gas was released from the beakers and that the solutions turned blue, indicating the formation of a copper ion. The solutions were then diluted with distilled water to known volumes. In one student's experiment, the reaction proceeded at a much slower rate than it did in the other student's experiments. Which of the following could explain the slower reaction rate? So basically they're saying everybody was supposed to go in the lab and do the same thing. Somebody was slower than the other. Why? What could this student have done to make their reaction go slower than the other students? Let's take a look. A says in the student's sample, the metal pieces were much smaller than those in the other student's samples. This doesn't say that the mass was different. It just says the pieces were smaller. If the pieces were smaller, that means that the student would have actually been increasing the surface area. And if you increase the surface area, you increase your reaction rate. You don't decrease it. So A would be the opposite of what we saw in the lab. B says the student heated the reaction mixture as the nitric acid was added. Again, this would give us an increase in reaction rate because heat them up, speed them up. If you increase the temperature, you're going to make the molecules move faster. Molecules moving faster means they collide more often. Also, they have more energy, and so they're colliding more often with more energy. That makes them more likely to meet the activation energy and for the reaction to occur faster. C says the student used a 1.5 molar solution instead of a 15.8 molar solution. Now that would absolutely decrease your reaction rate. That's a decrease in concentration, which means there's a decrease in the number of particles. The less particles you have, the less collisions you have, the slower the reaction goes. Let's double check D just in case. The student used a three gram sample of the mixture instead of a two gram sample. Again, increasing the mass would mean you had more particles for it to react with, and more particles means more collisions means faster reaction. So the only thing here that would have said that the student would have gotten a slower reaction rate is C, using less concentrated in, um, Using less concentrated reactants means you have less particles. Less particles means there's not as many collisions, and not as many collisions means you're having a slower reaction rate. So let's move on to question 11. Um, we covered quite a bit of stuff. So as I'm scrolling through here trying to find question 11, just a reminder, you should definitely be working on the homework questions that I tell you that you can answer at the end of each section. We have quite a bit of homework for this unit. Do not save it all for the end, okay? All right, let's look at practice problem 11. The oxidation of iodide ions by arsenic acid in an acidic solution occurs according to the stoichiometry shown above. The experimental rate law is given to us, okay? So they didn't give you all the data. They're not asking you to analyze anything. They're already telling you, hey, we analyzed the data. Here's the rate law, okay? So this question should be nice and easy because we don't really have to analyze any data by ourselves. What is the order of the reaction with respect to iodine ions? Well, if we take a look here and we find the concentration of iodine ions and we look at that exponent, there's no exponent there, which means it's secretly a one. So the correct answer is A. If it were zero order, we wouldn't see iodine in here at all because anything raised to the zero power is one and we leave it out. If it were second order, they would have to put a 2 there as the exponent, and I don't see the 2 there, so it's got to be first order. Okay. Let's move on to question number 12. The reaction represented above occurs in a single step, aka it's an elementary reaction, Okay. that involves the collision between a particle of nitrogen monoxide and a particle of nitrogen trioxide. A scientist correctly calculates the rate of collisions between the nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen trioxide that have sufficient energy to overcome the activation energy. Okay, so this scientist has gone in, he's done some weird math, and what he said is, okay, this is the fraction of particles that should meet the activation energy. Okay, he knows it. Theoretically, that's what they should get. 
The observed reaction rate is only a small fraction of the calculated collision rate. Which of the following explains the discrepancy? So they've worded that really weirdly. Let's make sure we understand what that question is saying. They're saying this, this scientists calculated this was what our collisions should be. And then they go and they do it in the lab. And when they do it in the lab, only a fraction of what's happening is what, um, of what he said is happening is actually happening. So less collisions are occurring in real life than what he thought should happen. Why is the rate slower? So less collisions means less rate, a, sl a slower rate, right? So why is the rate slower in real life than what our calculations told us? Okay, that's what we're trying to figure out here. Basically, where did our percent error come from? We have an actual, what occurred in the lab, and we have a theoretical, what our calculated was. Why is our actual so much smaller than our theoretical? All right, so the energy of collisions between two reactant particles is frequently absorbed by collision with a third particle. There is no third particle to be reacted with here, okay? This is a single step equation, which means the only thing happening is that NO and NO3 react and you immediately get your product. There's not any other steps here to be involved, to mess with anything, so A doesn't make any sense. B, the two reactant particles must collide with a particular orientation in order to react. That's true, but let's double check C and D just to make sure. The activation energy for a reaction is dependent upon the concentrations of the reactants. That's not true. The activation energy is not dependent upon anything. So it just doesn't change. You just don't mess with it. So C cannot be correct. Now uh, that should say D. The activation energy for the reactant is dependent upon temperature. Again, the answer is no. That's not true. So the only thing here that would explain why the reaction in real life is happening slower than the number of collisions sh said it should is because just because you have a collision does not mean you have a reaction, okay? And not all collisions result in a reaction. So the reason why it's happening slower in real life is because that scientist, whoever he is, forgot to include the fact that particles must collide with the correct orientation in its math. Okay, so that's question 12. Practice problem 13. They've given you a rate law. This says rate is equal to km to the first power, which means that it's first order, and n to the second power, which means that n is second order. The rate of a certain chemical reaction between substances m and n obeys the rate law above. The reaction is first studied with a concentration of m and n each at 1 times 10 to the negative third molar. If a new experiment is conducted with M and N, each and 2 times 10 to the negative third molar, the reaction rate will increase by a factor of what? So they're saying you're increasing the concentration of both of these product, of these reactants, and both of these reactants will affect the rate. Neither of them are zero order. So what's going to happen to your overall reaction rate? Well, this is going to take some math, so let's figure it out. We have doubled both of them. Both of them went from 1 times 10 to the negative third to 2 times 10 to the negative third. Well, when we double in or m, we're supposed to double our rate as well. Okay? That's what that's supposed to be. But when we double in, we're actually going to quadruple our rate. Because remember, a second order reaction, whatever you do to the reactant, you're going to square when you do it to the rate. So when we've doubled M, first our reaction gets doubled. And then we double N and it comes in there and gets quadrupled. So it looks like we're increasing our rate by a factor of 8. Because it's going to get doubled first and then it will get quadrupled from there. That is a factor of 8. 